السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام وهو سيد الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس تقوى ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبت منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوى الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الطائعين والفائزين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this first Friday of Sha'ban that is only by 27 days left to Ramadan اللهم بلغنا رمضان Allahumma balirna Ramadan Allahumma balirna Ramadan We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His mercy to grant us to fast Ramadan in the best of ways that is pleasing to Him As we all know and we hear this in American saying life is a journey That means we all have journeys in our lives We're born to some parents, we didn't choose them to be our parents. By the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them our parents. He chose the place to be born at. And the second and the minute that we're going to be born at. And he chose the way how we're going to travel our journey, but we have the free will to either follow Kalam Allah Azza wa Jal, which is the Quran, and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was sent to us as an example we would deviate from that so life has different steps we go through at the end of it you're going to die what have you forwarded to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala how sincere were you when you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is extremely important because in Islam the journey of man is an important aspect of their faith and practice there are several references to man's 
journey in the Quran and the Sunnah which provide guidance and inspiration to Muslim in their pursuit for spiritual growth and closeness to Allah. It's not the American dream pursuit for what happiness. And there is no such happiness in your journey in life. You might be happy for a certain moment. If we are parents and we get to have a child, we're so happy. We got married, we're so happy. But then the struggle of that marriage, or before choosing a wife, choosing a husband, we struggle. During our teenagers, we struggle. But how would we grow to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is understanding the Quran, which is Kalamullahi Azza wa Jal. And you don't want to get into how Allah speaks and what. The Quran is Kalamullahi Azza wa Jal, period. Because it has not changed for 1400 and something years since it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 23 years. So we as a Muslim, we have something. Of value that anybody in the world should be jealous of us but unfortunately we don't practice it which is this beautiful being that gives you up to Manina closeness to Allah you're striving for something for eternity one of the most significant significant journeys in Islam is the Hajj for example and it's a beautiful journey why Allah made the fifth pillar of Hajj it's a journey with everyone everyone comes from all parts of the world and they call Duyufa Rahman the guest of Allah so I have been doing this for so many years because I had a hedge company since 2019, we didn't have much, you know, until see what happened this year. And I had experienced so many situations with, with people that some get the visa but they never make it. And some come last minute and he gets all these things happen to him so fast. Some people didn't have money and they made it. And some people have a lot of money, they didn't make it. And we must ask ourselves, if Hajj called do you for Allah Azza wa Jal, that you are the guest of Allah, and you don't make it, then there is a problem. Because where is your intention sets at? And this is part of your journey of this life that is going to end with death. So this journey of life, what is your intention in it? So everything starts with an intention. If you come into Juma, are you coming really to listen to the words of Allah? It could be five minutes, ten minutes, and you leave and you put it to practice because everything we say in here will stand against us the day of judgment. Because when things are revealed to us, to any human being, doesn't matter, have to be scholar or non-scholar, that is following to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and telling us and give us, remember, dhikr inna dhikr al mu'minin. And especially today with social media, anything you watch, somebody send you an imam, send you, somebody saying something, and you forward it, make sure you practice that. When you go back to Hajj, the beauty of it, that everybody comes from different walks of life, different languages, different cultures. But there is almost three million people there for the same reason. And you know, there is one place that doesn't matter what you pay, $20,000 or five or $6,000, you all sleep the same way. And everybody is wearing white, two pieces of cloth for men. There is nothing under you, there is no underwears. And if you die in there, they bury you just like that. And they don't cover your face. The beauty of that, when everybody sleeps in Muzdalifah, and you got to some height and you look at it, 
Everybody is equal. And there is dirt and you're sleeping on the dirt and maybe you have a backpack or something you bring in. Some people put in cardboard, a little, you know, sheet on it. And you look at it, you have to contemplate. Apart from Hajj, Muslims are also encouraged to undertake the journey for the purpose of seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge of what? Both of the dunya and akhirah. You cannot just go to become an IT, a doctor, and you forget about everything else. Or a businessman. Create a balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not get worship out of ignorance. You can't worship haphazard. You have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's part of your journey. The more you know Allah, the more you get closer to Him, the more you become more confident in yourself, the more you have personal dhani billahi azza wa jal. You always think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you find comfort of your life. Even when you're going through difficult times. And we see what happened to our brothers in Turkey and Syria. They are struggling. And we see many stories how people, some people didn't want to come out, sister, until she put her hijab on. And so many stories if you go on and read them. Someone saying, Alhamdulillah. Morocco last week. The snow that befall on, you know, fall in, in what is that? People living in the small places. And he, because it was unexpected, there was a use of military to clear the roads. And I don't know if they had cleared them yet, and they're expecting more snow, I think. And we, in our journey, we have a luxury in here. We're blessed. Look at yourself. Don't feel miserable. Look at what Allah has given you. The thing that Allah has not given you, He knows what's good for you. And I said that last week, when I was standing in, in praying, and somebody was texting with his tongue, he could not move his fourth part, his arm or his legs, and he was in the masjid. Should all of us be grateful in our journey and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For the purpose of seeking knowledge, visiting the sick, and performing <coughs> acts of kindness and charity. So the Prophet wasallam, he traveled during his life. Look at what happened to him in Quraysh. Look at he traveled to Medina. And from Medina he wants to give da'wah to Ta'if. And he did so many things and he defended Islam and Muslims. And he was in a forefront. He is sitting in his luxury things and preaching things. Then when we preach things, we say things, we have to act up on it. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'alun kabura maqtan inda Allah yan taquluna ma la taf'alun. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. It's us. We hope that we are part of ladina amanu. Lima taquluna ma la taf'alun. Why do you say we don't practice? Kabura maqtan. It is the biggest of our rock. And taqulu ma la tafalun. To say what you don't preach. Like you lie. You're saying one thing in the gathering of a Muslim and you're saying another thing in the gathering of non-Muslim, for example. When you're sitting with the brothers that pray, you say one thing. So brothers that, you know, bash other brothers and accuse them, you are part of that group. This is not how the journey of life should be for each one of us. As we are growing older and getting closer to the end of our journey. And a person should contemplate what have he done. Look back at your past. And the mercy of Allah, he gives us opportunities to fix our mistakes with him. And this is the beauty of the mercy of Allah. To us, this is how kind and merciful to us, more than our mother or father's have mercy, have mercy toward us. Additionally, the journey of man in Islam also involves the spiritual, the spiritual journey of self-improvement and self-discovery. Self-improvement. 
is when you have to improve yourself. As you go along through the journey, I have to seek to improve myself. If you were working for a company or in any position, you want to keep improving yourself. So you want to get higher in the ranks. You want to become the boss. You want to become whatever you want to become in that company, that institution. You know, and you keep improving by you know, education, by managing yourself better, by dressing better, by doing all these things because you have a goal in your mind. So what is your goal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is the self-improvement as a Muslim? So you can set an example to yourself and your family and your community. Why is that? Why we are not self-improvement? Where is the challenges are we facing? Are we honest with each other? Are we honest toward ourselves? Am I honest with myself to sit and say, what is the challenge I'm facing? And I'm asking Allah to help me improve myself. The journey involves striving to live a life in accordance with the teaching of Islam. Seek forgiveness for one's sin and the purifying one's soul <coughs> through acts of worship and good deeds. The Quran described this journey as a gradual process of spiritual ascent where individuals strive to improve their faith and increase their closeness to Allah. It is very simple. We all struggle. We all commit sins. Say that. Wallahi Allah is most merciful and most forgiving. This is self-improvement. I commit a sin, I return to Allah, I make two rak'at, I cry to Allah between me and Him, and Allah takes care of everything for me. And this is the beauty of this deen. This is what we should have. It's better than gold, it's better than diamond, it's better than any success you can achieve in this world. It is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Overall, the journey of man in Islam encompasses a range of physical, intellectual, and spiritual endeavors, all aimed at attaining closeness to Allah and living a life in accordance with the teaching of Islam. Alif Lam Mim Dalik Al Kitab Ula Raiba Fi Hudan Lil Muttaqin. This is the book of Allah. It is a guidance to us. And the story was told to me that somebody gave a Quran to someone. As he gets in Manhattan and he gets to Brooklyn, he called them and said, I want to become a Muslim. He said, Why all of a sudden? He said, He read this ayah. This is the manual for us. And if we don't follow the manual and we fall short, we make a mistakes, you know, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a chance to come back to His manual. This is the mercy of Allah. If you buy any product, you buy an engine to fix it. If you mess it up, you mess it up, that's it. You're out of warranty. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warranty for us His mercy, His forgiveness. That's what is the key importance not to judge others. The key of importance is to be patient, to love good for others. Teach your heart not to have an envy for others. Teach your heart to be content. Teach your heart, you know, to see what's good in another human being. Of course, there are human beings that are shayateen, and we have to know how to deal with them. And Islam gave you the tools to deal with that. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لكم واستغفر الله لكم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شر أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا in Islam, life is indeed viewed as a journey with a beginning and an end. The Quran refers to this journey as a test where human beings are expected to fulfill their obligation to Allah and to lead a life of righteousness and piety. 
the ultimate goal of this journey to obtain closeness to Allah and to earn place in paradise. Jannatun ardu has samawati wa ard. That's your ultimate goal. That is your ultimate goal. It is all our ultimate goal. Jannatun ardu has samawati wa ard. Whatever you desire in it is there. Don't try to figure out how you know this has happened, why the palaces, why if I want something, you know, will drop for me, why I don't have to do so many things. Subhanallah. What Allah has said for you, you cannot imagine. Even if they would picture it for you and make a movie for you, it would be it would you cannot imagine that. Because our mind does not have the capacity to know what Allah has installed for us. All what we have to do is think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So understand, when this, it says, مَرَاحِبُ الْحَيَاسِ الْإِنسَانِ فِي الْقْطَعَانِ مَرْحَلَةُ الْجَنِينِ مَرْحَلَةُ الطُّفُولَ وَالسِّبَى مرحلة الأشد وهي مرحلة الشباب مرحلة الشيوخة شيخوخة والنهاية الموت So this is the journeys of life And understand Quran talks about this And I urge you to go and research these things so you can know what is your life about Because a lot of times if you ask you what is life for you Ask yourself, why? Tabarak al-ladhi bidih al-mulk wa ala kulli shayin qadir al-ladhi khalaq al-mawt wa al-hayata liyabluwakumu ayyukumu ahsanu amala. It's Allah, the king, the dominions are in his hand. He creates death and life. So you be tested who is the best among you in righteousness and good deeds. Life is not about making money and having fame and having control and having status. Islam does not tell you you should not achieve that. You should by the means that they are pleasing to Allah. And the more you achieve, you're more responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more he will hold you accountable for it. You're responsible for yourself, for your family, for the position you are in, for, for you employees, for the people who you report to, for the amount that's been put in you, the more. So you want to become a boss and then in charge of a thousands of people, you're responsible for those thousand people and each one of you will come the day of judgment and say, Oh Allah, I want my rights. That is not your business. He pray, he's an atheist. That is not your, your, your matter. The matter for you is between you and that person and the rights of that person. The matter when somebody struggling and ask you for money, and you look the other way. Allah sent you an hasana. This is a matter that you will be held responsible. Allah is going to tell you, I send you a hasana. But you act in takabbur, in arrogance. You look at him down. As happened, I spoke about the clothing last week. That we sent. We sent the worst of clothing that the trash would not accept. This is the journey that we are thinking of as a Muslim. My brother and sisters, everything lost for them in Turkey and Syria, and I'm sending in clothing that I should not even say. That I saw with my own eyes. Brothers in here assaulted them out. Stuff for the evenings. Stuff for swimwear. They have snow. They have nothing. It's cold. Instead of going and buying the best thing, you would not believe until you spend from what you love or what you have, the best of what you have. And unfortunately we don't understand that because we are not close to Allah. We have not did self-improvement. We have not looked inward. We have not tried to understand our deen to our journey. Yes, you were a child, or you don't have, you lost your mind, or you sleep, the qalam. There is nothing that writes you since. But once you get into the mind of responsibility, 
and you become a man or woman, now you're being responsible for every act you do. You know, so we must understand, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nas, taqwa rabbakum lati khalakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaka min haa zawjaha wa batta min yuma rjalim kathir wa munisa, wa batta allah allati jasa'anuna bihi wa arha, inna allah kana alikum raqiba. And this is the Prophet, oh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say this, always, you know, in the first of his khutbah. مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارَ وَقَدْ خَرَاكُمْ أَطْوَارًا So we, you know, Sayyiduna Adam was created. And then, you know, as life progress from I don't know how many millions of years, Sayyiduna Adam, then Sayyiduna Nuh, then you go on, and then it's coming, Sayyiduna Muhammad is the last prophet. And we go through this life, through this journey. And some of us in our age, in the 50s and 60s, and maybe in late 40s, lived, uh, you know, the life without technology. And when you had the phone stuck to the wall or in your desk, and then, you know, you go progress, you used to read the paper, you used to read books that had value. Today, everything is on your hand, and you don't know the value of things that you are receiving because you did not self-develop. So your mind and our children are absorbing a lot of negative things. So they don't sort things out. But when you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't want to shut things down because Allah gives you that. He gives you these things that makes you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سَلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ تُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةٍ فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ تُمَّ خَلَقْنَا الْمُطْفَةَ عَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَقْلَ مُدْغَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُدْغَةَ عِدَامًا فَكَسَّمْنَا الْعِدَامَ لَحْنًا تُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهَا خَلْقًا آخَرَ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ just contemplate. Everything that happened in this universe, in technology, advancement in science, in all the things, don't you think that Allah knows this? Don't you think that Allah had created all these things? He created us. And I was listening to somebody and made me think. He said, we're living in the past. Because Allah created the universe and created us. So we live in, in, in the past that Allah has created. And it was like something to think about. Because everything has been decreed. So it's like if, every day things happen. So we, we, and we should understand. That is contemplation. Ibad is contemplation. When we start thinking. We're well, here in America. You think we came here because... We're so smart and it's been decreed by Allah that we are here right now this minute. And who's here? So we must understand our deen. The Prophet stated Wa was Sadiq al Mastuq, in a hadakum Yishmao, Yishmao Khalkahu fi Batni Umi Arbaina Yoman Mutfa. ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يسر إليه الملك فينفخ في الروح فيه الروح ويأمر بأربع كلمات في كتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أو سعيد الله مجنن من السعداء. so these things but you know if you read a lot of books again they tell you that the degree can change by dua but you have certain things that you need to finish. Either you have some masjid you want to build or some, some orphans you want to take care of. And, and, and there are books that are written about that. But I'm not going to sit here and try to talk about it. I trust Allah. And I want Allah to put barakah in our lives and use us as keys for good and the doors to shut down what is bad. Matatih al khair. It's extremely important. What do you promote in your journey of this life? That you know there is an end to it. There is a beginning. I don't know where we are in our life in that journey. Are we close to the end? Are we in the middle? This is Ilm al But every day and every minute I have an opportunity in my journey 
I should get closer to Allah and invest in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know time is one and I have to close. To say, the Quran emphasizes an importance of utilizing this life as an opportunity to do good deeds, to fulfill one obligation to Allah. This includes performance, act of worship, such as praying, fasting, giving charity, as well as treating others with kindness, compassion, and justice. Kindness. Compassion, to be compassionate. That means even if you have the authority to hurt others, even if they hurt you, you hold back. This is compassion. This is compassion and justice. <clears throat> to be just even against yourself. When you have done wrong to others, reach out to them and ask their forgiveness. Make sure you do that because in your journey, you go into stages. So you don't want to depart this world and you had a stage to fix your affairs with Allah and others and you didn't do it. Make sure. As in Islam, the journey of human beings is seen as a continuous process of growth development both in this world and the year after. In the dunya or in akhirah. I continue to try to be successful in this dunya. I want to make a lot of money. I ask Allah. I do. And this moment, I'm asking him to give me trillions of dollars. And I, and I want to ask him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khaza'inu, what? Dunya, what akhir? He has. And he's capable of giving. Do not belittle in the dua and ask for something small. Ask for something big of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beauty. But when you get awarded those things, make sure you use them. If you ask for power, make sure when Allah gives you strength and power, use it justly. Use it with compassion. Use it with kindness. If you got money, do the same thing. Don't use it for bribery and taking people's rights and cheating and doing all the bad things. Because now I have the money I can buy anyone. But you buy in the dunya. And you find Jahannam, eternity. So you must think in this journey of life that began as a baby and ends, I don't know when it's going to end. 100 years, 110, 120, 130. So what you have forwarded to meet Allah. For us, we have a chance today to work on ourselves, do self-development. But to do self-development, do self-assessment. Assess yourself. Take a piece of paper. And I challenge you to do it today. Sit by yourself in your car, in your office, ever, and say, just from last Friday or a month ago, assess yourself. What did you improve on? And what did you make bad decision on? Can you move your sayyad to become hasanat? Can you wipe off the sayyad by doing some hasanat? What kind of hasanat you can do? And I'm sure all of us have plenty we can do. Do self-assessment is extremely important. You assess if you have a business. Your inventory, your employees, what you spend, what you always in the bank, what you know you have to order. This is an assessment where you are with your business. Can you add employees? You cannot. Can you subtract? In a business, there is a book it's called Art of War. And it has to do by this Chinese leader. It was a warrior, but they teach it in business. You should read it, how you should develop certain things. And it's extremely important to think. Do we assess ourselves on a daily basis? Do I assess on my relationship with my wife, my children, my community? What do I contribute as a human being to humanity in general? Do I fulfill my obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I pray in my salat on time? Do I get up for fajr? <coughs> if I don't ask Allah to make it easy for you, because Allah will make it easy for you. Depending on your intention. Where is Allah fits in your life? 
Number one, number 20. Number 15, this is up to you. Wherever you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah puts you. You have a pyramid, a triangle, like this. Let's talk about a husband and wife. Friendship, anybody you want. You have at the end of the you know, the triangle, you're far away. Allah is at the top. The closer you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closer you get to each other. So we as a community, we as a husband and wife, we should get closer to Allah and we get closer to each other. That means we're going to love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to forgive each other. To this journey, let us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم اهدينا في من هديك وبارك لنا في ماضي وقينا شر من هديك اللهم اهدينا وهدي بنا اللهم اهدينا وهدي بنا اللهم اهدي اهل هذا البلد الاسلام وحبب اليهم الاسلام والمسلمين واجعلنا نكون قدوة لهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وارحم امواتنا واشف مرضانا اللهم احفظ بناتنا اللهم احفظ بناتنا اللهم احفظ بناتنا واولادنا اللهم الف من بين قلوبنا اللهم الف من بين قلوبنا اللهم الف من بين قلوبنا we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty to make us among the righteous, to give us guidance and to protect us from our own evil and the evils of others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us develop ourselves and to give us consciousness to know our faults and fix them and get closer to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove any arrogance in our heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put in our heart kindness passion and justice so we can live a life of contentment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us and answer our dua, you know, whatever it's pleasing to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look at this ummah and guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you know, have mercy in our parents that passed away, and loved one that departed this world and returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala husnul khatima. Husnul Khatima. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Husnul Khatima. Rabbana atina bi dunya hasana bil ahidah luqina adab Allah. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhimu salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استقيم الحمد لله